Hello and welcome to a presentation on Access Data's mobile phone examiner. This tool runs in conjunction with Access Data's Forensic Toolkit and allows the imaging and processing of mobile phone data in conjunction with other digital data within FTK2. This product is available as an additional module for FTK2 and includes a SIM card reader and USB connection cables. This product currently supports over 449 phone types with over 300 more on the way shortly. So I've got a case already started and I'm going to assume in this demonstration that you've already uh, got some knowledge and background in uh, Access Data products and specifically in uh, Forensic Toolkit version 2. I will be talking a little bit about the technology but uh, in general we'll be skipping that portion. There are other web, web uh, presentations available if you want some more information on that. And I'm gonna, I've already got a case um, uh, processed here. I'm going to go ahead and open this case up and I'll add some additional evidence to this case. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of evidence here in this case already processed. And I'm just going to walk you through a little bit of how the how you might go about uh, imaging and, and processing a phone using FTK2. So you can see that first off that I've got a mobile phone tab that is uh, present in FTK2 and this comes with the license uh, on the uh, on the license dongle for the mobile phone examiner. So, in general, this runs inside of FTK2, which allows you to process a phone along with another case, which is very unique to our product, so that you can, uh, perhaps you have uh, the computer that the person was syncing that, that cell phone with. You can now, in one case, uh, process both pieces of evidence and uh, clearly make comparisons and, and that kind of stuff across those pieces of evidence. So to add a cell phone to... Uh, to FTK2, the first thing you need to do obviously is to uh, have the tool installed and there is an installation that comes with Mobile Phone Examiner that installs the drivers for all the individual phones imaging technology. Now currently the imaging technology is uh, provided by both Compelson Labs and Future Dial and we currently support over 400 phones somewhere in the range of 450 with about 300 more uh, coming shortly. So once that is installed, then you can uh, go ahead and add a phone. So I've got the drivers for a, an Ericsson T300 installed, and I'm going to go ahead and, and go to the Add Remove Evidence window and try to add a piece of evidence. So uh, you can see here where I would normally add acquired images, contents of directory, and so forth. I now have this uh, new bullet for mobile phones, and it's going out and detecting all of the ports on the computer and finding uh, any that have mobile phones attached. So it does finally go active here, and I can click on the radio button for mobile phone and say OK, and I'm then brought up to the mobile phone uh, window where I can add and select the mobile phones that I want to add. It sees the Sony Ericsson T300 but also sees uh, separately a SIM card that's in that phone. So I'm going to go ahead and choose both of those and add both of those to the uh, to the case. And so what it's doing now is it's creating an image of the cell phones uh, in the case directory so that I can um, add that into other cases if I need to. Um, but that's all happening behind the scenes. And once that image is created, then it will bring up the, uh, the window to... Um, to go ahead and process that. Now I've already set up my case in advance. Had I not set it up I could I would obviously have created a case before I went in here but I could then uh, set those processing options up. So I'm going to give it just a second to finish uh, adding. There it is. And now the manage evidence window comes up and I can see that in addition to the pieces of evidence I've already got processed I've got two pieces of evidence here that are ready to be processed. So I'd simply pick a time zone or pick, pick any uh, processing options that I wanted to change from the default, including any KFF options that I wanted to set forth, and uh, I can go ahead and process the phone. So I'll go ahead and click OK and the phone will then begin to process. Let me close those two imaging dialog boxes and I'll just go ahead and shut this down in the background, uh, let it run while it's, while it's processing and we'll talk about a few other things real quick. So if you're not familiar with FTK2, just real briefly, FTK2 is uh, built on the Oracle uh, database and it is tab driven. So I've got all of these tabs that go across the top here, each of the tabs representing a different uh, uh, area of analysis. The Explore tab obviously gives you the overview um, of your evidence and allows you to drill down into the pieces of evidence. So I can simply drill down, even though this T uh, 
let me go sorry let me go back to the t300 even though that it's it's not fully processed I can begin to drill down into the folder structure uh, of that uh, of the data that's been pulled off that cell phone and I can see a phone book and some SMS uh, information now obviously this has not been processed completely so I'm gonna I'm not gonna rely on this information until the processing is done so let me go back up here and you can see that I can drill down into these other uh, items also and depending on the type of phone and the, fo the file structure in the phone you'll see different information presented here uh, obviously every every uh, manufacturer cell phone can have a different uh, file system on it and so uh, that information is presented differently so I can go ahead and if I would like to look at a piece of evidence I can utilize the quick picks to see all of the information in that particular piece of evidence so we'll, we'll move on to this in just uh, just a minute the overview tab gives me an overview of all the categories of evidence so now all my items are broken out by their category I've got my graphics executables mobile device data things like uh, you know phone entries and SMS messages things like that and so forth. If I were working a case involving uh, email databases, I could have my email tab populated. My graphics tab is obviously where I'm going to find the graphics, and we'll get back to that. I can do live searching, uh, index searching, because all of this data has been indexed. And lastly, the mobile phone tab is where the, is, uh, where the majority of the uh, mobile phone related examination will take place. The mobile phone tab is simply just like any other tab in FTK, but it has the addition of the mobile phone. Um, tab filter so all so you could have a hundred pieces of evidence uh, from computers and you know everything else in here and you could this tab is filtered down to just those items that come from from a mobile device so looking on this uh, particular piece of evidence here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, utilize the the quick picks here at the top of the tree to list everything in the in the file list so now I see um, all of the objects in the database that have to do with cell phones I have to apologize for the real estate here a little bit. I, I've, uh, I'm doing this uh, on a limited screen size so that it's uh, usable on more platforms as it's viewed by our customers. So I'll just I'll have to do a lot of shifting of the uh, columns and so forth. So I, in this, uh, the file list window, I've got all my available columns across here. And let me pull this column settings window down and choose the phone column settings. And this would be uh, for things like phone book entries and so forth. So now all of my columns um, that are presented are related to to general phone entries. Now I've gone ahead and made a couple of custom um, column settings for things like specific column settings related to phone book entries, related to SMS messages, and even all available um, phone columns to, to include things like calendar events and and all the the different things that you might have present on a phone so I'm going to choose the SMS message column setting and move those out a little bit now you can see obviously that that I'm looking at every object in a cell phone right now but the um, the columns are limited to just things related to SMS messaging Now, obviously there's lots of things that don't that aren't related to SMS messaging and I can fix that very simply by applying a filter an additional filter to this tab so we've already got a filter that's narrowing us to mobile device files I'm gonna apply an additional filter that I've created that limits us just to SMS messages so now I'm only looking at SMS messages on these on these phones and I can utilize both the the filter and the column settings to really narrow in on this information. So I can just scroll down here now and I can take a look at all of the SMS messages on the phone. And that includes the, the time received if it's been recorded by the phone, the from number, the to number, the message itself. And the nice thing about this is I can sort. So I'm going to sort on the from number and I can really quickly see all of the SMS messages from a single phone. I can do the two number and I can see all the SMS messages that are sent to a specific number. And as I choose these things, I can go into the properties window. And again, let me uh, pull this up where you can see it. And there's potentially some additional information that's presented in the, uh, in the mobile device uh, file area of the properties window to include where it came from and uh, the SMS message itself and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and pick just a few of these. Just uh, grab a few of these messages and I'm gonna pretend that these are um, of evidentiary nature so I'll go ahead and create a bookmark on these SMS messages and again we cover bookmarking uh, extensively in our other uh, web presentations 
So I'll create an SMS message, I mean an SMS message bookmark, and I can even comment individually on, um, on what these uh, messages are for, uh, to who they're to, etc. So if I want to put a comment, I'll just put my comment here. So any kind of comments that I would like on an item by item basis. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK, and now those items have been bookmarked. Notice in the SMS messages, just as a side note, that this technology allows us to do things like read Unicode within cell phones. So here we've got a bunch of Arabic text messages, and we can read those, assuming you can read uh, Arabic, we can read those no problem. Let me go back up and find one that's... Okay, so that, that demonstrates fairly well that we can, uh, we can read Unicode SMS. I'll go into a little bit more about Unicode searching uh, in just a minute. Okay, so what about phone book entries? Well, we covered SMS messages. Let's now switch over to phone book entries. So I'm going to change my filter to uh, phone book entries to limit myself just to the entries that have to do with, uh, with the phone book within a phone. And I'm going to change my column setting to the same to the phone book entries column setting. And again, you can see, now obviously, again, I'd have to be able to read Arabic, but we're, we're getting these uh, Unicode entries from the phone book in addition to um, all of the other phone book entries that might be present in a phone. And again, all of these columns are sortable, so I can sort by first name, by last name, by label, by phone number, and so forth. And there are quite a few columns that are available. In fact, if we want to take a look at the available columns uh, within FTK2, we can go to the mobile device files and you can see all of the columns of information that we can present to you. So let me just expand these out. And regarding the calls, we get call number and call time. Uh, events, we get the event. This would be like a calendar entry. Uh, event end time, event start time, and event phone number. All of this information coming from the phone book, our phone book entries, and all of this information uh, the from number, to number, text, time received, time zone, and so forth from the SMS area. Now all of this is assuming that that information is present uh, in the uh, particular cell phone. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that and get out of there. And again, we're looking now at the, uh, the phone book entries within, uh, within the cell phone data. Okay, so I could continue to work on the mobile phone tab, um, but to utilize the full power of FTK2, I'm going to go ahead and bounce over to the Graphics tab over here. And on the Graphics tab, I'm going to list all of the items in my entire case. All of the uh, the items in my case as far as a quick pick. Now I've still got a filter running that's limiting me to phone book entry, so obviously that's not going to help me at all in the Graphics tab. So let me turn off that filter. And very quickly, we can see all of the graphics that are uh, present in the case. Now, obviously, if this was a case that involved a phone book, or I'm sorry, a cell phone and uh, other digital media, you could apply additional filters to just narrow it down to graphics that are present on that cell phone. Or even better, you could create your own custom tab um, that not only use, uses the mobile phone information here, but perhaps also includes a, uh, a thumbnail display. So because FTK2 is built on this technology that it is, I can have this thumbnail display uh, anywhere I want in any tab that I want. So that's kind of nice. So let me turn that off for now and I'll go back over to the graphics tab. So I can see in the graphics tab I've got all of these uh, different images that are present on these cell phones obviously in all different locations in the phone depending on the type of image and how they were saved and um, to include some stock images and obviously images that were taken with cameras so I can just go through those and I can bookmark those images uh, just like I would anything else so let me just grab a few of those images and we'll just make a quick bookmark of those uh, of those images Again, all the same rules would apply as far as being able to comment on those items individually. Okay, what about EXIF information on cell phone pictures? 
I'm going to go now over to the overview tab and just give you a quick uh, review of what's on the overview tab. We break things down by their category, also by their file extension uh, and their file status. But the nice thing about the categories is that they're in a tree form, so I can now go into, say, the graphics container and then drill down further into raster graphics, JPEG graphics, JPEG EXIF graphics, GIFs, bitmaps, and so forth. Each type of of uh, file categories broken down into all of its subcategories. So that gives me the opportunity to go into the JPEG EXIF category and take a look at these EXIF photographs. So these are JPEGs that have EXIF data. And that EXIF data is uh, present in the um, the properties for the file but also would be present in the filter view of the file. So I can see right here the EXIF data if I filter out all the non-readable text all that EXIF data is present for me there. So let me go down here to, to these and you can see that sure enough these particular pictures, and I'll take a look at one, these particular pictures were, have EXIF data that identifies the camera model as a 5300 and the manufacturer is a Nokia, which sure enough coincides to the to the camera model that we're looking at right here. You can see in the file path it's from a Nokia 5300. So that's very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and bookmark a few of those pictures and we'll pretend that those are of evidentiary nature. And now let's talk briefly about other files that might be on a cell phone. So again, cell, every cell phone manufacturer does things differently. There's different file structures, uh, file systems, different ways to store data, and so there are going to be times when FTK is just not going to identify or support particular files. Well, the, one of the nice features of FTK is the ability to, to define user types. So I've defined in my, uh, when I set this case up, I defined in a text file the header information for a 3GP uh, video file. So obviously, uh, if you're not familiar with that, 3GP is the, is the cell phone um, video file, a common cell phone video format, and one that is not immediately identified by FTK. I'm sure that will be coming shortly after this presentation though. But but the same scenario would repeat itself on any number of occasions where you would have data and as you continue to grow um, your own database of those headers you can add those to the file and have those things identified for you automatically. So here I've got some 3GP video. Now the built-in viewer um, Internet Explorer does not view uh, 3GP video, nor does Windows Media Player. But one of the nice things about FTK is I can push out this file to anything that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up with an external program. And my choice for 3GP files is going to be, uh, let me pull this window over to my other screen where you can see it, is going to be uh, VLC Media Player. So I'll go ahead and use VLC Media Player to open this file and of course it opens on the other screen so let me pull it over here also and you can see <coughs> excuse me that I'm now playing the video from that cell phone so that's kinda nice so two pieces that go together there is the ability to write your own custom file identification and also to be able to view those files with any number of uh, external viewers especially due to the uh, unique formats and stuff that are found on a cell phone so I'll go ahead and bookmark this video, or these videos. And now let's talk briefly about index searching. So again, all of this information um, has been indexed and is searchable. It can also be searched on the Live tab if you want to do things like regular expression or pattern searching. So I'm going to go over to the Indexed Search tab and I'm going to search for an Arabic string. And I can see that there are four, I'm sorry, 20 hits in this particular uh, string. And I'll go ahead and take a look at the results of those searches. And I can see that I've got hits on a couple pictures, which I can look at here. And I've also got hits on those that 3GP file, which was actually the name uh, that I'd copied out to the clipboard. 
as well as some mobile device data. I've got a uh, phone book um, entry for this particular item. So again, we can we we can search in Unicode. I could have just as easily done that demonstration with uh, with an ASCII string, um, but the phone has been indexed and is searchable. So if you're looking for a specific phone book entry, I'm looking for something like let me go and clear this out. Something like oh maybe the word John, the name John, if it exists in the uh, in the phone book. And sure enough, there's an, an entry for John Doe in this uh, Ericsson T300. So searching works just like uh, it would with any other case. And lastly, I want to talk briefly about uh, cross-case comparison. So um, I, I did not set it up for this, uh, this demonstration just due to time constraints, but I could have just as easily taken some of these images that we saw here, and I could have put them into a KFF hash set and run those hashes against the phone data and in the file status area file status area under the KFF alert or KFF ignores I would find those matching files if there were any so hashing works just like it does with any other uh, digital media where I can hash the files if I've got them on residing on a computer and I want to make a comparison to uh, whether or not they exist on a cell phone or vice versa or cross case if I uh, am sent um, KFF hashes by another agency or another investigator or, or analyst and I want to see if any of those matching files uh, exist in my case. And so lastly let's go ahead and make a uh, quick report just to show you how all this information can be reported on. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this report. And I'll fill out my information here. And I'll just go ahead and leave the uh, all the extra things blank. You guys will get the idea, I'm sure. In the bookmark section, I'm going to go ahead and choose to select all to, to include all of my bookmarks. And I'm going to include to export the actual objects out, uh, create thumbnails for them if they are uh, images. And as far as the column information that I want to report for, I'm going to go ahead and report on all of the column data that's available for cell phones. Now, obviously that's quite a bit more than I would probably want to do in a real report. I probably want to break this down by its different uh, types because each type of, of bookmark would, would have its own uh, unique columns that you'd want to report on. But just for the sake of, of explanation here, I'm just going to go ahead and choose all of the phone columns that are available. So we can see all of this data here that's available. Okay, and I can obviously sort on that information also if I don't like the order that it's in currently. As far as the um, additional sections are concerned, they would play just exactly like they would in, a, in any case using FTK2. I have my graphics section where I can have my thumbnail graphics of all of the graphics available, my file path section which allows me to uh, have a graphical representation of the file path, my file properties section where I can have additional file properties for different types of files. So this might be a good one uh, for phone data where I could have uh, the SMS related information for um, the SMS messages or the phone book information for the phone book uh, items, things like that. And I'll just go back and do the file path information just to show you how this would uh, would work in one example. And I'm going to pull down file category and choose mobile device data. And we'll go ahead and choose to export all of those items. Actually, we won't export them all. We've already done that in the bookmarks. And we will say OK to that. So I'm going to browse out to my report folder on my desktop. I have a previously existing report there, so I'm going to quickly delete that. And it's going to go ahead and export out all that information that I have uh, chosen to include. Okay, and so now I've got my report open here. I'm going to go ahead and expand this out a little bit so you can see it here. I've got my case summary my case information obviously the case summary I didn't have I didn't didn't uh, take the time to enter that information the case information whatever I chose to uh, to plug in for my information my file overview and evidence list 
all of my bookmarks. So I've got my SMS messages. And if you remember, I, I chose way more columns than I would probably need in real life. I uh, did all of the available columns relating to cell phones where you would probably just use the SMS related ones. I've got my phone camera images, each one hyperlinked uh, with a thumbnail, so I can click on the thumbnail to see the full size image. Right, I've got my uh, the EXIF uh, images that I bookmarked separately, and each of those um, with all of its um, pertinent information. I've got the videos, and let me go down here, and assuming again that you've got the appropriate player installed and, and assigned for that file type, I can go ahead and run those. Let me say yes to that. Whoops. Try that again. X, uh, there we go. And I can run the uh, the video player right there. Hopefully you can see it. Hopefully the frames per second is allowing you to see this in the video, but it is playing. And I can go down and take a look at the um, the list by file path information. So I've got this graphical representation of all the things. Now I chose to apply a filter to this. So these are the SMSs that are in, messages that I chose to bookmark and uh, there they are laying out there for me. Um, I've got my file properties area if I chose to include that and obviously registry information if this were a real case and I had uh, registry information documented from a computer. So in short that is uh, the overview of the uh, forensic toolkit mobile phone examiner and if you have any questions, please contact Access Data. Uh, you can do that at www.accessdata.com, and there are some links there to uh, get a hold of sales and or support uh, for any questions that you might have. I right, thank you for your time.